Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Take a away from our study there. 1 Peter, since this is Mother's Day, look at the uh, first 22 verses of 1 Samuel. There was a certain man of Raven and Zophar of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroboam, the son of Eli, the son of Tobi, the son of Zoph, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penaniah. Penaniah. And Benaniah had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. The two sons of Eli, Hophni and Pinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Benina his wife, and to all her sons and to her daughters portions. But of the Hannah he gave a worthy portion, portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversaries had provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so yearly by year when she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, uh, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she bowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but wilt give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the maid, unto the Lord, all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And it shall come to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart only. Her lips moved, uh, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. And Hannah appeared and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. <coughs> I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a woman of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the women, so the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house in Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked him of the Lord. And the 
man Elkanah and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child uh, be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. And Elkanah, Elkanah, her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good, until thou hast weaned him, only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. For a few minutes I want to talk from the subject of the praying parents. Praying parents. That was a time some years ago when I was considered a subject like this not applicable. Or you would assume that all parents pray. But unfortunately, we live in a time when prayer is not on the list of a lot of people. Sad fact of the matter is, we've got a lot of folk who come to church and really don't pray. We have people who dare to bring children into the world, but they never really pray for them and definitely don't pray with them. I think maybe we need to lift up this matter of prayer. I was drawn to text, and uh, you know, Hannah, this story that everybody knows, uh, but, but I was drawn to text, and really what, what jumped out at me was, was this number three, and, his, and this man went out of the city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord. In other words, he said, this man had a habit of leaving his city just for one purpose, just to worship. Yeah. He brings his whole family just to worship. They would, they would have to go miles in uncomfortable circumstances just to worship God. And he had this habit, he had this habit. And even though he had this habit of worshiping God, things were not ideal in his life. But this matter of worshiping God was important enough for him to leave town to make sure that he would go and give God his rightful due. Yes, oh, my brothers and sisters, I wish I could impress upon you the importance of worship and that, that, that you should put worship high on your list. It's sad that too many folk don't take the time to worship God. I was in state meeting last week and President uh, George Clark was saying something that troubled me. Uh, I thought I was telling him I wasn't going through it, but he was saying he had to uh, call two of his choir members down because they had one of these, those the Bluetooth you put on your ear. They had the Bluetooth on their ear in the choir stand. And George was one of these old traditional preachers. And he said, well, now you can't sing in the choir with a Bluetooth on. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know I, was, I was raised up in choirs where they wouldn't let women wear jewelry and the, the makeup. So it was nothing new, but I, I think about that, a Bluetooth phone in the choir, a lot of pastors would even notice it, but, but then he raised a very pertinent issue. He says, I don't stand why folk want to come in church with phones. Yeah. When I was young, younger, I used to laugh about it, you know, I said, if it ain't Jesus, hang up. Yeah. But you think about that, I mean, you know, we've gotten so, so technologically yeah. astute that we can't come to worship God for two hours without a telephone. Uh, and I remember, I remember when, when we had no cell phone, I remember when all they had that big old ugly phone, they, you know, had a little rubbery on it, you know, at the house. And you know, you left the house, went wherever you had to go, and come back and use that same old ugly phone. Didn't have no call waiting, you couldn't have no little machine to take a message. If you missed the call, just wait until they called you back again. But now we can't sit in church for two hours without somebody knowing that I got a phone. I used to think it was a matter some folk wonder if I look important. You know, it's really not important because they got people on welfare got phones and pages. You know, when I was the boy, you know, the doctor used to have to get up because he had a little pager, and the doctor would get up and go take the call because he's a doctor and he would have to accept the emergencies. But now you got to fuck everybody that they all that. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't sit through church two hours without your phone. And, and think about that. You think you think God is the most important part of your life. You say God is just your, your, your reason for living, and yet. Oh, God. 
you don't talk about texting while you drive. You think I appreciate you texting while you worship? <laughs>
the, the, the Lord's house with her husband, yeah. but she's not going like she's been going before. She purposed before she left home, I'm going to church and I'm going to talk to God about it. Y'all yeah, yeah. better hear me today. See, yeah. fact, man, it's a lot of times you trying to handle your problems. A lot of times you trying to deal with your struggles. A lot of times you trying to deal with what's going on in your life, but you really don't know how to handle it until you But just what no, just what no regular prayer. She didn't just come to pray for devotion. I told y'all somebody gonna turn their phone on because I said that. And then got to give to the baby, try to make the baby good. Like she <laughs> that, 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 that that she prayed, but when she prayed, she poured her heart out to the Lord. Yeah. She poured her heart out. Out to the Lord. I feel like when you're praying and you're really talking to God, you really don't care how you look. <laughs> see, see, when I, when I, was, I, was, I was, it was, it was, it was a Sunday, I was my preaching, and, and uh, uh, I, 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 I was called to preach, and you know, Dad was praying, and uh, all the, oh man, it was, the spirit was high, and then first little lady started shouting, oh man, she was shouting, and I tried to grab that woman, man, she was just, and you know, she's already thinking at me, you know. I was strong, young, and I, I was light, you know. And she's, I'm just going to that and focus, grab that woman, and she's just a shout, she's just a shout off, man. And finally, her wig <laughs> kind of moved to the right. <laughs> and after I saw that woman stop shouting to straighten up her wig. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> See, I think when the Holy Ghost really get a hold of you, you really don't care about what side the wind is on. When the Holy Ghost get a hold of you, you ain't really concerned about if your makeup is in place. I tell people all the time, I see women who are all particular, but, but I want you to see folk, and I see you want to make sure they make up is all right. When you're in the tension care unit and you struggle between life and death, you are not concerned about whether or not your power is on just right and your eyeliner is in place. No, no, when you struggle with your life, all you concerned about, Lord, can you hear my cry? Can you hear my prayer? Yeah. Bob declared that she was an angel, she was crying, she was laboring, she pours out her heart to the Lord. And I just came by to tell you that no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, everybody has the privilege of calling on the name of the Lord. If it's important to you, it's important to God. Because y'all find out if it's not all that, God can fix your heart so that you get your priorities straight. I told you before, the Bible said he'll give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean that God will give you stuff that you have no business having. But what it does, it means God can change your desires. So trivial stuff don't become important to you anymore, any longer. You know how to give God his rightful due. She pours her heart out to the Lord. Y'all know the story. She prays and asks God to give her a son. But then she didn't just ask for a son. She said, God, if you give him to me, I'll give it back to you. Oh, my Lord. If you give it to me, I'll give it back to you. I said it right away. I got the climax for that, so I'll hold that point. I'll tell you all I'm going to climax before I get there. Because I'm good at that. She poured it out. When's the last time you prayed to God and poured your heart out of your worship? I, I said, I think praying ought to be a prerequisite for parents. I do not feel you can be a good parent without praying. Yeah. Well, I know some angels, they're good parents, they don't pray. Uh, they might be considered good in a lot of circles. But let me tell you something. Anybody who raises a child and don't lead that child to Christ has
has cheated the child. My daddy worked the whole time I was living with him. He's the one who provided put food on the table. Yeah. My mama cooked for us. She cleaned that house. She was there. My mama didn't put us off on nobody else. I had parents who were in the house. They were parents. I can talk about a lot of things they did for me. But the most important thing they did in my life was they introduced me to God. My mom and daddy didn't send me to church. They brought me to church. They didn't tell me how to be a good man. They showed me what a good man was like. My mama was playing on the piano in church. 